I've been asked plenty of times before, what are my paddles mean that you guys see on my wall in my office? Uh, today, I'm gonna go over them. All right, right now I'm pulling up to my other property. Um, I have one of my contractors here who's gonna install a uh, water pipe. And so I gotta go turn off the breaker inside the main house. Uh, this house, this is gonna be our rental property. Whew. This is our first one that we've actually like done a remodel on. And you know, I had plans this year. Oh, I'm gonna buy three properties. It's gonna be great. Well, this one's draining everything I got right now, so talk about learning and uh, I, I know I know that uh, the work now the lessons now are gonna pay off it doesn't always seem that way but that's how it works Is this house doesn't even look the same. Whoa, looks so good, so good. So we had a tiny home right down there that we had demoed. We had demoed because it was gonna cost more money to fix than it was to just knock it down. There's a man Nate right there. This dude is a master on this heavy equipment machinery. This looks so good. It was like a big drop off down there. And uh, now it's super smooth. Man, this dude is a master at his craft. A lot of work to be done on this property still. This is all like grade A uh, manure topsoil that we took down by our garden. And uh, it's gonna make it really nice grass. All this, guys, all this is crazy. This is, it was all slopey. This addition right here wasn't even there. Um, so it's really sick. We got this retainer wall, this beautiful entryway. Yeah, this whole new addition right here, pantry washer dryer all the kitchen we'll get new countertops new cabinets small little pantry right there this place is looking good uh we got all the flooring right here for it we got tile for the bathroom so this bathroom right here has been a pain in the butt. But uh, we're gonna get there. This is this is my fault right here. We were, probably could have been done with everything inside the house, but I'm like, no, we're spending all this money doing a remodel. Let's just remodel the bathroom. That makes sense. Well, that did not uh, pan out how I thought it was. Let's see, now we're looking for the water pump. Let's check that out. That wasn't it. I'm not gonna climb underneath the house. Someone down there. Shit off the water. Oh. 
It's a tight fit in there. Success. So, I have my coaching call in like an hour and 10 minutes. So, I'm going to head to the gym before that. One thing I cannot do, and one thing I learned a long time ago is like, I cannot provide the best value to anybody if I am not in my best state. And the only way I can do that is by changing my vibration. So, I'm gonna go exercise. What a busy day. I actually shot some content in the gym and then my uh, camera cut off, but that's okay. I told y'all I was gonna show y'all what my paddles and what they mean, and so I'm gonna do that right now. So this is like my war wall right here. I have all my paddles from uh, my time in the military and some of my placards that I have right here. Uh, plank holder, gung-ho award, Honor graduate here at dive school, super sick. This right here is my very first paddle. So let's just talk about the paddle real quick. So the paddles uh, go back to uh, World War II of the Marine Raiders. And the way the story goes, what's been passed on to us, was that when you joined a Raider unit, uh, you were issued your knife and your paddle, right? Because they were smart, uh, small boat teams that would do uh, deep reconnaissance and uh, ambush type of raids. And so once you left the Raider unit, if you were worth your weight in salt, they would take your paddle and they would decorate it in little trinkets and stuff like that. And they would present it to you at a paddle party. Now, I don't think that this is how they used to do it according to the old Raiders that we actually associated with. But the legend still goes and our tradition still follows. Now, before the Marine Corps Raiders, right, the modern day Marsoc Marines, which is what I am or was, there was reconnaissance and force reconnaissance. So I started off my career as a scout sniper, then I worked my way to force reconnaissance, which then later transferred uh, over to Marine Special Operations Command, and that's where I spent the remaining of my career. So, y'all, a lot of y'all are probably familiar with this uh, jump wing and dive bubble right there. That marked an insert complete reconnaissance marine. So that means you're jump capable and you're dive, combatant dive capable. Uh, well, this was my first paddle. I just finished uh, airborne school, so I had like all like five jumps. And I actually think you need a 10 jumps for your goal wings when you graduate dive, uh, jump school, you get like little lead sleds. But I was a sergeant, so there's my rank right there. And this is a hawk's tooth. So when you graduate scout sniper school, you're presented with this hawk's tooth, which uh, is supposed to be a symbol of the only worthy uh, of a sniper is worthy of your kill. And if, as long as you wear it, you'll be protected. So this is uh, my paddle. And on the paddles, they put some type of like funny sayings. And uh, some of mine were, 
hey, get out of my seat. I remember that one very specifically. There was a teammate of mine who was in a, is in my seat and we stopped, we were going to a training event. And I'm like, get out of my seat. And I made such a big deal like a meathead back then. Oh, but kind of funny. And then right here, oh, you mean coming? What's a hymen? Let's be real. There was a time in my life, I didn't know what a hymen was. If you don't use the Google, it's there for your education. And I will not really show you what's on the back of this particular paddle because I have a team photo and I don't really want to black out all their faces. But on the back, we have a lot of cool designs and I'll show you on these paddles. So this is my very first paddle that I got when I left uh, first Force Reconnaissance slash Marine Special Operations Command. There is the first Marine Raider Battalion logo right there. Um, that was my first paddle. My second paddle was this bad boy right here. Uh, this paddle right here was when I was at the schoolhouse. This was our old schoolhouse logo right here, uh, which is now called ITC, Individual Training Course. Uh, that's where the pipeline is. So once a Marine goes through selection, ass assessment and selection for MARSOC, they go, to, excuse me, they go to uh, the pipeline course, uh, ITC. And after they finish operator training course or individual training course, uh, they become a critical skills operator. And then they go to six months of language. After their six months of language, then they go to uh, their uh, unit. And we have three battalions, first, second, and third Marine Raider Battalion. And that's where these guys find themselves at. And so, as you can see, another hog's tooth right here. Look at this amazing wrap, right? So, uh, all these wraps, these are done by someone, and not everybody gets a paddle, right? So, there was a point in time where people thought I was deserving of this, and so they, they made me a paddle. This one's really cool. So, uh, I was called a bear Jew uh, growing up in the, in the, in the teams. Uh, I was born and raised Jewish, and... Being a scout sniper, it was really weird in a lot of cases, but uh, look look at the, bottom, the back of this one. So the back of this one right here, you see the Reconnaissance Creed. The Recon Creed is everything we lived by and stood for uh, during our time as Reconnaissance Marine. Now, back in the day, when MARSOC first started, there was no MOS designator or military occupational skill uh, for a Marine Raider. We were still previous MOSs, so I was a Force Reconnaissance Marine. So a lot of MARSOC was started by Reconnaissance Marines, Force Reconnaissance to be specific. So that's why you see the recon creed on that. Now, you fast forward a little bit, back in like 2015, 2016 time frame, time frame uh, MARSOC got our own badge. This is our MARSOC insignia badge. As you can see, it's got the shield like the Marine Raiders right here. Uh, but it doesn't have the skull in it, so it's kind of missing out this cool factor right here. But uh, this paddle was my third paddle. And as you can see, it's super, super nicely decorated. I was a Marine Master Sergeant at this point in time. I mean, you know, if you guys remember, uh, really big deal for me. I was the youngest Marine Master Sergeant in the modern day history. And it was super sick, such a privilege. Uh, there's the amazing Ink Globe and Anchor. And before you haters out there talk about, Cody, war is bad. No shit, war is bad. I don't promote war. I just promote not being a peasant of your mind and go after the things you want to. I fantasized about being a Marine Corps Scout Sniper as a kid. Fantasized about it. Every day I drew about it. I watched movies about it. And I'm literally living proof. You can go after the life that you say you want. I mean, in my office here, I have my entire We Defy the Norm uh, apparel line. Like, guys, this is all started inside here. So don't ever listen to these peasants out there telling you, you can't go after the life that you want. That's not true at all. You can have the life that you want. You can go build your life. But are you gonna do the work? Because that's what it comes down to. So the back of this paddle is super cool. It has Raider. Now, you might be saying, do you need to be reminded? Yes, yes I do. Now, this was my last paddle right here. This one is super gangster. This one right here has like a ghillie suit Right, a ghillie suit is what Marine Corps Scout snipers wear, uh, snipers in general wear to blend into their environment. And so this one's decorated in a ghillie suit. Eagle Globe and Anchor represented. Now, I want you to look at this paddle. 
these are all different pieces of wood right here, right? And so this was a lot of work was put into this. Now, this was from my time as the uh, Fox Company Operations Chief. Uh, this was my last deployment. Uh, my company found ourselves in northern Iraq, and we returned home at the, end of 20, at the beginning of 2016. And this was by far my most enjoyable and difficult deployment I've ever been on. Now, it was spent a lot of, for me personally, I was behind a lot of uh, screens. We had walls so big, 70 foot monitors, you know, all these little monitors put together. And I'm watching the battlefield take place on these screens and that's how I'm supporting the men and women that are forward deployed. I was in charge of all the special operations teams in Northern Iraq. So it was my responsibility to, to battle track them, to support them and to honestly, you know, fight for them. So while they're on the battlefield, they need support, they need air support, they need logistical support. And that was my job as an operations chief to make sure and to facilitate all that type of stuff. Because listen, I don't care what job you have in the military. We support the men and women on the ground. That's what we do. Some people just don't like to hear that. So anyways, the people on the ground are made effort. I don't care how you shake a stick at it. I spent my time at 2nd Marine Raider Battalion. So therefore you see the 2nd Battalion logo right here. And there you go. You see the resemblance of the Hogs 2 still. I was a Marine Master Sergeant. These are my free fall, my halo wings, high altitude, low opening wings. Uh, my dive bobble, my jump wings, and then my Marine Raider uh, device right here. Now, if you see on here, I have all my awards. I have one award, which is right there. This is actually my final stack uh, with a bronze star. That's the one that's missing from this one. So actually, this is my second to last award. This is my third paddle. This is actually my fourth paddle. But uh, yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, it must be nice if I had all those ribbons. What well, must be nice, bro? Trauma? <laughs> Oh man, but you know what's really nice? The back of this. Check this thing out. So the back of this really encapsulates everything. So there is the infamous bear Jew right there. I don't know if you guys see that. There's a bear with the Star of David. And then first and third, and then the Marine Corps uh, Raider logo. I was one of the few Marines that deployed and served at every Marine Raider Battalion. So I started my career at 1st Marine Raider Battalion in California back in the day. Then I went to our schoolhouse. Then I taught, which is on the East Coast. Then I went to 3rd Battalion, which is on the East Coast. Then I went to 2nd Battalion, which is on the East Coast. And I deployed with every battalion. And uh, there wasn't a lot of guys back then that did all that. I mean, this plaque right here is literally being a plank holder uh, for the very first uh, Bravo Company, so uh, Alpha being the first company, Bravo Company being the second company, but the second one to ever leave uh, California and deploy overseas to Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, those paddles mean a lot to me. I'm very grateful they, they made it through all the traveling we've been doing over the past few years. And uh, I'm very honored to have them presented on my wall because the coolest thing about this is that, you know, it is nice, I love these. But someone took the time, the money and the resources to, to, to make these, right? And so when you're presented a paddle, it, it's, it's bigger than yourself, right? So every time I question myself or I doubt myself, especially as an entrepreneur, as I'm growing and building and expanding, I just simply need to remind myself where I came from. And rem remember, that it's not about me. It's not about if I'm comfortable or not, if the odds are in my favor. Listen, the odds are never going to be in your favor. This isn't the Hunger Games. This is called reality. And in reality, you get what you put in. If you put in nothing, you get nothing. If you put in everything, you still might not get nothing. And that's the beauty of it all. And that's what I love most about being an entrepreneur and what I love most about being a civilian. There's so many things that we can have in this life, but you have to ask yourself, are you willing to put yourself in a state of discomfort to get it? Now. I am going to go home. I'm going to break my fast this evening and I'm going to eat. But uh, I just want you all to know that the only limits that you have are the ones that are inside your mind, the ones that you're placing in yourself. And they're not even real. So if you're struggling right now with wanting to build something or go after a dream or not sure if you can actually go create something or achieve something, listen, you can. Remind yourself, you're a savage, and one day, 
you might have your own action figure. Look at that, Cody Alford action figure. Look at that stud muffin. Don't mind that guy. It's in your head, get out of there. <laughs>